Well, I've been prompted by several people that are now in the silver space that have been doing some absolutely superlative work in my view. Uh, a lot of these people are younger than I am, thank goodness for that. And they're really getting the message out loud, clearly, and strongly. One in particular that uh, struck me, and I want to use it, and got permission, comes from Brother John F., and his website is brotherjohnf.com. This one that I'm going to comment on in particular struck quite a nerve with me. So let me start by speaking about what I believe strongly is the Achilles heel of the financial system, and I believe that's silver, not gold. The reason I say that is a couple. One is that the old adage that he who owns the gold makes the rules has a quite a bit of merit. And the ownership of gold is still held by a great deal of central banks, regardless of how many times it's been hypothecated, swapped, loaned out, deep storage, and on and on it goes. The bottom line is most of that gold is still resting in the central bank. It could be argued on proper ownership. But as we all know, possession is nine-tenths of the law, meaning that if it's sitting in a central bank, the central bank is in a good position. In other words, they've got access to it. So bear that in mind when it comes to gold. On the silver side, for all practical purposes, no silver is held in the central banking system, and it's been dismissed by the banking system as money for a very long time, which actually, in my view, gives us an advantage because silver is a monetary metal, certainly is an industrial metal as well. But the monetary aspects are coming to the fore more and more due to people talking about it and explaining monetary history. If you go to many people that are involved in the precious metals industry on all levels, you have gold money, which uses both gold and silver. You have Hugo Salinas Price, who has started the campaign many years ago to institute a policy where you could have the silver libertad, silver ounce, circulate alongside the peso that's still in play whether or not it gets brought into legislation to be determined but again i believe that the achilles heel is the silver market and all it takes is more and more people waking up to the financial system as it really exists and to start to buy into the silver story and purchase physical metal for this to have a drastic impact what i'd like to do now is comment primarily on this video that was done by Brother John F. And a couple of comments. One, you should watch the entire video, but the part we've selected to show you in my video is when Dr. Ron Paul shows the silver ounce to Bernanke. Brother John comments that this is highly symbolic. This, this ounce of, uh, of silver back in 2006 would buy over four gallons of gasoline. Today, today it'll buy almost 11 gallons of gasoline that's preservation of value and that's what that's what the market has always said should be money M money comes into effect in a natural way not in a, an edict not by fiat by governments declaring it, it is it is money but uh, why uh, why is it that we can't consider you know, the two of us, an option. You love paper money. I think money should be honest, constitutional, it's still in the books, gold and silver, legal tender. Why don't we use it? But why don't we allow currencies to uh, run parallel? They do around the world. So this is a very clear challenge to the banking establishment. There's no question that this is highly symbolic. You can see by the look on Bernanke's face that he is really being called out here. He's been called a liar, he's been called a thief, and now he's been shown the weapon that will destroy him. Brother John comments that this is highly symbolic, that he's showing the silver bullet to the vampire. And that's a metaphor for taking down the system, in, the, in my view. You're showing, here's silver, this has purchasing power, it's maintained its purchasing power, or done better, over the last several years, and He's implying, Brother John is, and I'm agreeing, that this is something that the banking system doesn't have much control over, and it is a monetary asset. It's holding its purchasing power. It can be used by the people. This is also being done, this talk between Dr. Ron Paul and Fed Chairman Bernanke during the takedown of the silver market that was substantial. And I've done about three or four interviews since the 29th of February and explained 
that it took roughly 550 million ounces of paper silver to drive the price down 250. And that's about 55 times as much silver than it took to move the price up 250. And I based that on the fact that when the TSLV, the physical silver trust that bought 10 million ounces, moved the price up roughly from 30 to 32 and a half. So I believe strongly that the silver physical market has certainly got much more power than the paper market. So moving on, Dr. Paul asked him about running parallel currency, like I just outlined at Hugo Salinas prices. Obviously, there is no formal way for that to happen, but yet we know at the state level that Utah has already implemented at law that you can purchase goods and services throughout that state using gold and silver. It's yet to be implemented far and wide. That's still in work, but that's one of several states. There's really 12 more that have similar legislation. So obviously, we're getting to the point that I have forecast and many others that as things deteriorate further, that people seek value and value-based money. I think that's going to catch on more and more. This is going to cripple the ability of the banking establishment to manage the price as they have done for so long. The other part I'd like to comment on is when Dr. Paul talks about keeping your money in the mattress. You know, if inflation is so low, and he says, I don't agree with that, but if inflation is so low, this hurts savers, because where are you going to put your money? In the mattress? you're not going to get any interest on it. It's, it's worthless to do that. What I like to point out is, you know, what you should be saving in is real money. If you've been saving in physical silver and gold for the last decade and putting that in your mattress as a metaphor, in other words, putting it in a safe, secure place, you would definitely have maintained or actually increased your real purchasing power over the last decade in a rather significant way. So if you're going to save, your savings should be in money, real money. And lastly, what I'd like to comment on actually above and beyond all that I've said already. And that is my view on the most important of all. And that is that no matter how much money or real wealth you accumulate in the physical gold and silver markets or even in the derivatives markets such as mining shares or ETFs or anything else you care to name, no matter how much money each individual makes in this market, I think it pales compared to the most important thing. And that is freedom. If you have accumulated a great deal of wealth, but you don't have the ability to spend it where you wish or drive where you wish, say what you wish. In other words, if you've lost your freedom in the process of gaining individual wealth for you or your family or for your heirs and to pass on as a legacy, if you've got that and given up your freedom, I think you've given up way too much because it's the freedom that made everything happen up until this point. The free ideas, freedom of speech, the freedom of the press, all the things that have slowly eroded over time and are an accelerating basis now where the powers that be, the government entities, if you will, and not just in the United States of America, but basically on a global basis, have over time eroded those freedoms. There's nothing in my view that's more important than being a free people. And I believe that the internet is key in this area for everyone to get a free market approach to the markets, to health, to learning, to music, to whatever. I mean, the internet is broad-based, it's so diverse, it's so worldwide. But it's really free market because it's up to you as the individual to read, heed, and do your own due diligence on what's said. I was taught very early on not to believe everything that you read, not to believe everything that you hear, and not even to believe everything that you see. And those are good facts to keep in mind. Regardless, there's a great deal of truth on the internet, and to me, one of the greatest truths is what's happening in the global economic system and the corruption that is pervasive throughout the global political structure. And these are things that are taking away our freedoms. So remember, live free, be free, die free. When I made the Matrix video, I had one thing in mind. I wanted to appeal to the younger people. I knew that most of them understood that movie, at least at some level, and I wanted them to understand that in today's society, for the most part, people are born a debt slave, live a debt slave, and die a debt slave. It doesn't have to be that way, but it takes you to do something. I encourage you to get educated, to continue to watch videos, not necessarily mine, but any that resonate with you, and please don't hesitate to hit the send forward button so you can share those with friends, family, and those you care about. What will you do without freedom? I'm dying in your beds. 
many years from now, would you be willing to trade all the days from this day to that for one chance, just one chance, to come back here and tell our enemies that they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom!